Welcome back. Today we're going to get started with Single Store and Ruby. To get started with Ruby and Single Store, it's just three easy steps. First, we sign up for a Single Store license. This is free. Second, we spin up a cluster. We can choose to do this in a managed service, in virtual machines, or in containers. And third, let's run our application. Let's dive in. First step, we come in and we sign up for Single Store. This process is free. Once we've clicked on the link in the email, we'll land here in our portal. We can click here on software licenses, and here's the license key that we'll need. We'll copy this license key, and in this case, I'm going to use Docker to get started. Pull up the Docker Compose file, and we just need to set the license key in the terminal to be able to use it correctly. That's great. So I've done a Docker Compose up, and we now have our cluster running. As part of spinning up the cluster, it's also going to run init.sql. init.sql is that mechanism for getting all of the schema that we need in place. So if I come here to localhost 8080, we'll be able to log into our cluster. The username is root. The password is the password I set in the Docker Compose file. And we're logged in. Here we see stats about our cluster, total memory usage, disk usage. We can see our cluster is healthy. Switching over to the SQL editor, let's select the database that was created, and we'll run it, and we can see we've got that database ready to go. Perfect. Step one is done. Step two is done. Now let's dig into our application. We have here this application. And looking at our gem file, we see that we're just using the standard MySQL 2 gem. Coming into our app, we can take a look at this and see how it works. Let's fire it up and see what it does. It's going to do the basic CRUD operations, create, read, update, and delete. And we see that everything worked fine here. That's great. Let's look at the code and see what it does. We start off creating a database connection using configuration for host, username, password, database. Once we've got that client, now we can pass that in to insert a new row. Then we'll read that row back out based on that ID. We'll document that row. And then we'll update the row to change the value. Once we've updated that row, we'll read all the rows so that we can see not only that updated row, but also the new row that we created. And then finally, we'll delete that row. Let's look at each function. Here's our create command. We'll insert into messages the content, values. We use this question mark to avoid SQL injection. We're creating a prepared statement. And so that variable will get set in place as we go execute that statement. Here's another prepared statement inside read1, where we're selecting that message where that ID matches. We'll execute that. And we'll return the first result in this result set. We only want one row. When we read all, we'll select star from messages, order by ID, and we'll return those results. Now, whether we're using select star or we're selecting specific columns, it works great in single store. The update command will pass in the client the ID we want to update and the new content. We'll set that in place, and we'll execute that statement. Delete is quite straightforward. We'll delete from messages where the ID matches, and we'll execute that command. So we create a new row with this content. We will read that row, documenting that row, update the row to change the content, read all the rows, and finally delete the row. Let's run that command again and see how it works. We inserted row three, and as we read it back out, we can see the ID, the content, and the created date. We'll update row three. So no longer is this inserted row, it's now updated row. And we see the original row that was created as we initialized the database. Then finally, we deleted row three. That works great. Grab this repository in the link below and get started with single store today. Thanks for watching.